Welcome to our third part of our section this week. Last time, you learned about piecewise functions and how they can be used to move your game player. But what else do you need in your program? Well, one thing is you might need to move in more than one direction at a time. So far, we've been using just one number to talk about direction. When we talk about moving in more than one direction, we need a model that can handle more than one number. So, so far, characters only move along one axis. So when we saw um, update, we saw update danger, it took in a number, it gave back a number, um, and that's all we needed to do to represent um, the movement along the x coordinate, right? So that's back and forth from left and right. Update danger has no ability to read or update the y coordinate. But suppose we wanted to move diagonally. What would have to change about the domain? So think about that. What, if you wanted to move diagonally, what, what do you need to have as input to your functions? What about the range? What's going to need to change? The purpose statement? Is that going to need to change? Yeah. So what is the range we've seen for some functions so far? Um, We've actually not seen a function that can produce more than one thing at a time. So we've seen functions that take in multiple values, but all functions must only produce one value. So it seems like that's pretty limiting. How can a function um, you know, produce something that's useful in the world of our game or in the real world if it can only do one value? And that's where data structures come in. So Racket allows us to create new kinds of data that contain more than one thing. So as far as the function is concerned, it produces one of these things. But then we know that inside these things, there can be more than one other kind of thing. So they're called data structures, or struct for short, just so we don't have to type all that, type the word data structures all the time. So one kind of struct that is useful to us is a position, which Racket abbreviates P-O-S-N. So you can think of that as position or posin. I'll say sometimes just posin, which just means the struct that is a position on the screen. So let's look um, in Dr. Racket for a second. So, what happens if I enter a number? Get back to that number. If I enter a string, I get back that string. If I enter a Boolean, I get back a Boolean. Okay? So we always got all values evaluate to themselves. Right? That's what we saw here. Whatever I evaluated, it evaluated back to itself. So now, let's look at one of these posin things. Um, here's how to make a posin. Make posin 10, 40. Okay, it evaluates to itself. So it's a new kind of thing. Um, and when I print it out, it, it just says it's the same thing. Now, but, but we know that a posin actually can represent a position on a screen. And what do we know about positions on a screen? Well, they take an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So let's look some more at these posins. So um, in other parts of Racket, you can learn how to actually define um, new structs. Um, but we'll learn today about this specific struct called posin so you don't have to worry about how it got made but but it's just a program or it's just a it's just something you can define just like you define a string and you can define um, numbers so let's see I'm gonna make my own name of P and then I'm gonna make put that posin in there so that way we can talk about P all right and P evaluates to itself, so it's that same positive, or at least the same values of that. Um, and so what can posins do? Well, so I, I made one. 
Um, and inside, this is the x and this is the y. So I can have uh, pos and x, and I can give it my p. So that's going to, um, from my pos and that's called p, it's going to give me the x value, which is 10. Okay, cool. I can also say pos and y, 40. Cool. So I can, if I have one of these posins, so it's just one thing, right? And remember, we said that a function can only return one thing. So it's just one thing. It's, it's a P. It's a posin. But I can later, like, so I can pass around this P and do a bunch of stuff with it. And then later, I can, if I need to find the X position, I can take that posin and find out what the X is. If I need to make a new posin that is, say, a different x but the same y, how could I do that? Well, I could say make posin p2. So I'm going to make a new one. And for the x, I'm going to, let's see, so I'm going to have, I need to have an x and a y. So I'm going to put placeholders here. All right, so I need to have my x and my y for this new posin. And what did I say? I wanted to... Um, have an x that is, let's say it's 10 more than, than my p posin. So I can say plus my posin x and 10. Right? And then I said I'm going to leave the y alone. So I'm just going to say posin y. Right? So this kind of update, so this p2 is 10 more, right? So it's 10 to the right, 10 more than my other one, and it's on the same um, line. It doesn't go up or down. So that's going to, if I use that, those P's to represent um, dots on the screen, this one's going to be 10 pixels to the right of that one. So let's see. Oh, I didn't need all these parentheses on here. I had my placeholders, but there. Oops, okay. I can't name it and make it in the same time. How do you, you let's select this, put a parentheses, and say define P2. And that automatically puts a print. If you select a section and then start, then do an open print, it automatically puts a close one at the end. Now, so I defined it, I made it, so now I can do P2. And it, like we said, is 20 and 40. So we're going to see some more about that. All right, so now we can update. There's a 2D danger, um, update danger. So we'll make a 2D version. And why is it called 2D? Well, our previous one only moved in one dimension, right? It only moved along the X, Y axis. So if uh, we're going to move both X and Y, then that's going to be two dimensions or two direction. And we'll call that 2D. So if update danger moves diagonally, the range must be a what? Well, we said range can only be one thing. And to move diagonally, we need two numbers, right? We need to change the X and the Y. So the range must be a posin, right? Because that we know a posin is a thing. It's one thing. And it has two parts inside it, an X and a Y. So let's use the design recipe on page 25 um, to rewrite update danger to produce a posin instead of a number. So let's make sure that in our version of the book... We have the 2D version, which I'm not positive that we do. We don't, I think. Yeah, we don't. So um, instead, go down to the end of the book. Where we have some example contracts. So just use, use that example contract page like you've done before um, to do this one. So we're going to rewrite update danger.
to produce a positive instead of a number. And I'm going to go through it on the screen, but, but go ahead and, and um, you can, uh, when I get done, uh, pause it and you can update your version of the contract. So we're going to have update danger, and instead of just a number and a number, it's going to take in two numbers, an x and a y coordinate, and produce a POSIN that has that x and y. All right, so we're going to make a purpose statement. We'll give two examples. We'll define the new function, and we'll change our program to so that danger moves diagonally. So let's. Um, I'm going to make a new copy. Let's make a new copy of the of our game. And like I said, next week we'll work on getting um, kind of a good working copy of your game file to. Um, has, has all of our changes in it. All right, I'm going to open. And I've been doing my own rocket programming, so I've got to change directories here. I'm going to open game. And actually, I'm going to file save definition as, I'm going to call it game two. And we want to do update danger. Okay, we've done this before, I think, where we, um, we had our danger so that it, um, Moves, moves the danger down by 50. So that's our old one. All right. So here's our old contract and purpose statement. It's going to subtract 50 from danger's coordinate, and that's what this one did, and we had our own examples. And our definition was that the body is going to move it down, move our x variable down by 50. Or, or sorry, looks like uh, it's x variable, so it's going to move left and right. So it's going to move it um, backwards, 50 to the left. All right, so here's some, some places where we're going to need to change. If we're going to have 2D, if we're going to move diagonally, we're going to need to add a new number. And we're going to produce a POSIN instead of a number. So actually, I'm going to go on and change these as I'm going. So we're going to take in two numbers, and we're going to produce a posit. OK. And we're going to say modify the x and y coordinates. I'm going to say a new position based on the given x and y. Okay. All right, so, so for some examples, we now need to ta take in another one. And it looks like in this one, so we're still changing the x by 50, and it looks like we want to change the y by 60. All right, and in fact, I think our, our uh, statement ought to say that. So I'm going to go on and say um, move left 50 and down 60. All right, so now let's do update this. So I'm just going to use the same ones that I had here, so you can make your own examples, or you can follow the ones on the, the slides, or you can use mine. Um, let's see, 100, and let's move him to, let's say he's 200, 
and 231, and let's say that's at um, 231. Let's put it really high, so let's do um, 350. All right, and now, so this, remember, this is just the x coordinate. So what do we want completely? We want to make posin. I'm just going to do it down here so I get everything straight. And x and a y. And we want our x to be still this. And we want our y to be, and we said we wanted to move it down by 60. So we want 200 down by 60. So I think that's my whole make posit. Let's see how that lines up with the one from the slides. Down by 50, right? So 170, start 170, go subtract 50, start 80, start 80, subtract 60. So here's mine, start 100 subtract 50, start 200, subtract 60. Okay, I think that's right. So I'm going to do the same thing for the second one, make, pause them. And I need an X and a Y. And my X is already here. So there's X. My Y is going to be, I'm going to subtract 350, because that's my starting point. And I'm going to subtract 60 from it. So I think that's the whole make pause. Kill that. All right, let's go back to the slides. Another example. All right, so now our definition, we're going to add a new input. We'll call it y. So that's going to be our new variable. And then we're going to use our example here. So actually, I'm just going to copy this. Make Actually, I still have another clipboard, I think. Make pause, and so there's my one from the example, and this was the x, this was the y. All right, and I think that makes um. Make sure we got. Close that. Close the body. Close the define. All right, thinking that's probably right. <clears throat> so. Go ahead and update your signature, um, in your book. And then make sure it matches here, and you can have different examples. And I'm going to run mine, see how that works. And I don't know that we have any um, – yeah, we, 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 this is where we fixed – you know, we, we did our up and down arrows conditionals before. Um, and, and so really we can't see anything here, but we do see – that our tests passed, right? So we didn't have any problems. That means these tests passed. So I think that's um, good for update danger. We don't have that hooked to a key yet. So um, we're not seeing anything, um, except what does danger look like? Let's see, what is a danger? Danger is a solid red triangle. And where does it start? Go to the bottom. Let me run it again. The way where the, the positions it uses to start these things. Um, sometimes, oh, there it was. It was right up there at the top. So we didn't see where it started, but it passed the, the test. So I think we're good. All right, so what else do we need to do now that we have the ability to move in two dimensions? Um, we can modify update target to move diagonally also. We need to modify update player to be able to move in two dimensions. We, um, we already have examples for going up and going down, so we can um, um, add additional examples. Um, to move diagonally, and then also reuse these, and we'll need to change them a little bit to use our new version. Um, so we can add examples for left and right. Modify our cond statement so that each one produces a posin. So we'll put this on our to-do list for next week. Um, 
So this will be on our to-do list for next week when we um, work on our game. Change our else clause too, okay. So we could also add more advanced movement by using what we learned about a Boolean function. So as we get a basic version of your game running for the first time next week, um, you can, you know, now you know all the techniques, now that you know how to move in two dimensions using a possum, um, and know about Booleans, there's a ton of different um, um, movement that you can put into your game. So we'll get a basic version going, and then you can add more and more functionality. So here's an example of warping. So instead of having the, the Y coordinate change by just, you know, moving incrementally, across the screen by you know adding 10 or, or less than 10 um, you could do something like hit the C key um, that will cause the the player to jump right so when warping if, um, if you, I don't know if you played the you did you played the game uh, asteroids before so you could always warp um, to get out of the way of a big rock um, also, we need to put in some boundary detection because right now we'll keep going up, 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 like we saw with uh, the rocket in, in the game.rkt file that we had. Um, it doesn't know when it stops. So we could, um, you know, use uh, a Boolean logic to detect when it's at the edge, just like we did for the butterfly, and um, do something when it's at the edge. Now, well, you can decide what you want to do. You want to bounce off? Do you want to just stop? Do you want to wrap? So there's a wrap something, right? So when it gets to the top, it could come back from the bottom. Um, top and bottom, not as common, but definitely left to right, right? So when something disappears off the right-hand side, it could wrap around to the beginning, right? So you could reset, you know, it would be something like if the um, X coordinate is greater than, um, in fact, let's just look, uh, you know, a good one to do to look at that is um, cage. So here's our butterfly. All right. And let's see, do we have, what do we have at this version? Going on to the right, and it stops when I get um, here. Right, so it's using um, detect left or the safe right, safe left. But what if um, we wanted to wrap instead? So we could, when we get to x coordinate of greater than 680, then um, instead of just stopping, we could reset the x coordinate to be zero. And then he would jump over here and start again. So there's a lot of things we can do um, with the techniques we know so far. You could um, have the player hide. Like you could have a secret key where he, if you press H, then your player hides. Or you could have um, an explosion that uh, you know disappears, the danger object, if you press the Q key or the space bar or Z or something, uh, that it automatically uh, makes the... Um, the danger object disappear. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. So congratulations, you are now a conditional branching expert. Um, so what's still missing? What's next? Um, when, so like I said, next week we're going to work on getting um, a single game file for you up to complete speed. Um, uh, but one thing, nothing happens when the player and the danger or the target collide, right? So we're going to need to write in um, collision detection um, so we, you know when two objects are overlapping. And then um, you know, when you collide with the target, then you get points. When you collide with the danger, then you lose points or you die, whatever you want to do. And then um, we got to get the artwork that you put uh, together so far um, into a single game file. So that's um, the plan for next week. Good job getting this far.